In today's news, BVI government successful in defending a multi-million dollar claim brought by BVI Airways. Dr. Diolando Smith says he feels vindicated after BVI Airways arbitration award. Nadia deming Hodge has been tipped to be the new Deputy Chief Immigration Officer. Resilient and strong, let's carry on for BVI Festival 2021, the official announcement of 2021 Virgin Islands Festival theme and slogan. The committee begins fundraising with Dollar Drive, which gets mixed emotions uh, from residents. Update, controlled re-entry for international ferry passengers through Rotown Jetty. Authorities say maximum passengers still at 50 with one daily round trip. Opposition leader, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn, says we have to be ready to reopen two cruise ships calling to BVI. All this and so much more after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. The wind up. What in the hell? My freaking is about these people. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the... What's poppin'? What's really good? Welcome, everybody. It's Monday, May 17th, 2021. I'm Ron Grant. We're coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. A happy Monday to one and all. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, before we get into our newscast, we're touching on some items that we may not have been able to get to. Of course, over 7,000 visitors are said to have entered through Beef Island Airport since December. Government defeats BVI Airways in arbitration. Dr. Smith says he feels vindicated. COI expresses concern about government's parallel Internal review, cruise passengers, bubble area being considered for tourists, and young local sprinter Adija Hodge conquers the world. We're so very proud of our athletes. Now beginning on the local scene here in the British Virgin Islands. The British Virgin Islands Ports Authority is advising the public that the current international ferry passengers schedule and passengers limit remains. These continue to only be one daily round trip ferry service uh, for this initial period with a maximum of 50 passengers per trip. Ferry passengers arriving and departing the British Virgin Islands must reserve a ticket with the scheduled ferry operator through their booking portal. The international ferry passengers schedule is as follows. All ferries will depart Rotown Tortola for Charlotte Amalie St. Thomas at 8 a.m. All ferries will depart Charlotte Amalie St. Thomas for Rotown Tortola at 4 p.m. Sundays will alternate between operators and the BVI Ports Authority say they will issue updates as necessary. Travelers are reminded to obtain their entry approval by going to bvigateway.bviaa.com. Of course, we are tracking and following stories of uh, residents and visitors complaining of the long wait time, inaccuracies with the BVI portal, as well as the number of passengers they say on a boat is more than 50. Beginning now, the government of the Virgin Islands has successfully defeated a claim worth in excess of $10 million from those behind a project to connect Miami and Tortola with direct flights called the project following a seven-day arbitration in March of 2021. In an arbitration award handed down on May 13, 2021, the arbitrator rejected all claims made against the BVI government by BVI Airways Inc. and the Colchester Aviation LLC. In particular, the arbitrator concluded the following. The government of the Virgin Islands properly performed all its obligations in relation to the project. The government of the Virgin Islands did not breach any of the terms of the framework agreement. The government of the Virgin Islands was entitled to terminate the framework agreement in November of 2017. They say there was no basis for all the allegations of dishonesty or fraud made against the BVI government. Now, in addition, there was no basis for allegations of defamation and no breach of any obligation of confidentiality by the government of the Virgin Islands. Now, the government of the Virgin Islands has been awarded its costs for defending those very serious claims, fraud and defamation, which were described as frivolous following cross-examination of individuals connected with the Colchester and BVI airports, airways sorry, at the March 2021 hearing. Commenting on the findings, the arbitration award, the Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Andrew A. Foy, said in a comment, and I quote, this is an important victory for the people of the BVI. Despite being provided with significant public backing, the parties behind BVI Airways failed to get a single commercial flight off the ground or to repay any of the public funds invested. 
This ruling ensures that no further funds will be have to paid uh, to these parties. The Premier added, I want to assure the people of the Virgin Islands that your government will leave no stone unturned in its pursuit of the recovery of the sums paid to Colchester, BVIA, and individuals connected with those companies. We are also seeking to recover the costs incurred in defending the wholly unjustified claims brought by this arbitration. He further stated, anyone legally responsible for the BVI's loss will be held to account to the extent that the law permits. We will now move to the next phase of our recovery strategy. Having successfully defended this claim, Premier Foy explained that as a result, this is a very important victory for the people of the BVI, adding the BVI government will not have to make any further payments to BVI Airways or Colchester in relation to the failed project. The government of the Virgin Islands also advanced uh, a counterclaim base, in particular on alleged dishonesty and conduct by Colchester and BVI Airways as a result of payments which they made to the BVI government, U.S. Legal Counsel and Agent Mr. Lester Hamm. Now, the arbitrator dismissed that claim, noting, however, that a civil claim in the BVI courts may result in a different outcome, particularly since the court has investigative powers that I do not have and may be able to gather a record more of a robust, robust than this arbitrary uh, record. Now, Premier uh, shared that as a result, the government of the Virgin Islands intends to pursue a uh, direct in the BVI courts to recover damages and uh, losses suffered relating to the project, a core part of the BVI government's strategy relating to the field project, which is already being implemented. Now, the government of the Virgin Islands was represented by the arbitration of George Spalton, QC, and Marie Claire O'Kane of Four New Square, London, and Martin Kenny, Andrew Gilland, Andrew Blackburn, and Hakim Creaky of Martin Kenny and Co. Solicitors. Uh, of course, Additionally to this, uh, in response to the BVI government's success in defending a multi-million dollar claim brought by the airline, former premier of the Virgin Islands, Dr. D. Orlando Smith, in a recent Facebook post weighed in on the matter. The post read, and I quote, I am pleased that after retaining Martin Kenny and Associates in 2018 under my administration to begin proceedings against BVI Airways that would lead to recovery of BVI government funds, that the arbitration proceedings were successful with the arbitrator finding in favor of the government. It has been a long, hard fight with more legal battles to come, very likely. In 2015, my administration acted in the best interest of the BVI in our efforts to introduce direct flights from the U.S. to BVI. I am happy that the arbitrator found that we upheld our end of the arrangement and I now feel vindicated. He continued by saying, I am most grateful to Martin Kenny and Associates for their hard work in ensuring a win for the territory. Now, the highly controversial saga isn't near an end quite yet, with proceedings expected uh, to heighten. Of course, uh, we sat down with Dr. D. Orlando Smith earlier uh, today uh, to get his take uh, on the uh, entire matter. And if you missed that interview, uh, please be sure to check it out on our Facebook, Facebook page uh, for the full details. Viewers still ahead, Ms. Nadia Deming-Hodge, tipped to be the new Deputy Chief Immigration Officer, and Resilient and Strong, let's carry on for BVI, has been selected as the theme and slogan, and we have all the details of that after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and our partners that hold us down, it's season two of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, taking you on the most inspiring journey with the best and brightest distinguished gentlemen of the BVI. Raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men like you've never seen them before. Governor Augustus J.U. Jasper, Jovan Klein, Neil Klein, and so much more. Turning modern-day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen with yours truly, Ron Grant, a 284 Media production. Viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. You're watching 284 News out of Tortola in the BVI. Continuing on... Senior sources within the government of the Virgin Islands have confirmed that Mrs. Nadia Demi Hodge is tipped to be the new Deputy Chief Immigration Officer. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Public Administration and Political Science from Florida Memorial University. Her appointment is expected to take effect within the coming weeks and she will serve as Direct Deputy to the Chief Immigration Officer, Mr. Eon Penn, in the execution of duties which include ensuring the smooth, smooth and efficient operation of the department through management of daily operations and supervision and training 
assigned uh, to staff. Congratulations to Ms. Nadia Deming-Hodge. The Virgin Islands Festival and Fairs Committee has officially announced the selection of the official 2021 VI Festival theme and slogan. This year's winning theme is a reflection of heritage and hope commemorating the 67th Emancipation Celebration and was submitted by Miss Aliana Smith. The slogan, Resilient and Strong, Let's Carry On for BVI Festival 2021, was submitted by Miss Shanika Mercer. Both winners will receive a prize of $250. Chairman of the VI Festival and Fairs Committee, Mr. Khalid Fret, expressed his sincere thanks to all entrants, adding, and I quote, We are happy to be able to upkeep with the tradition of having the Virgin Islands public decide what the story will look like and sound like for our festival. Mr. Fret also said, and I quote, I encourage dancers, troops, musicians, Calypsonians, poets, painters, designers, and others, artists to represent the theme and slogan via their chosen art form. He said, we are looking forward to seeing just how creative we know you can be. All in customary, the two winning entries were selected via majority vote by the members of the VI Festival and Fairs Committee. A total of 13 persons submitted entries by April 26, uh, 2020. Now, this year's observance commemorates the 67th year of our annual Emancipation Festival, also known as August Festival. The first August Festival was held in 1957. Now, in addition to this, committee members have begun fundraising efforts with a dollar drive, and it has received many mixed emotions from the public. Residents are questioning accountability as well as the additional uh, of some begging uh, the people. See this, sorry, as the committee begging the public and them still having to pay, particularly in these difficult times. We're happy, of course, though, to see that the BVI Festival and Fairs Committee is moving forward with Festival 2021. I know residents and visitors alike are very happy and excited to be able to ce uh, celebrate uh, the upcoming festival activities. Viewers, opposition leader says we will have to be ready, or we have to rather, to be ready to be reopen to our ships calling to the BVI. We have all the details of this and so much more after a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Is business slow, cash flow down, hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Yeah. Father Jesus, that learn your long like church souls. Hmm. All right, let me enjoy the rest of it then. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy, hold on. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man can take care of me. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Viewers, welcome back. In an earlier interview today, Dr. D. Orlando Smith clarified his position on the present situation pertaining to BVI Airways. Take a look. We have known for quite a long time that tourism is one of the main sectors of the economy. And in order for tourism to really thrive and grow, airlift is important, has always been important. We recognize that. And we, during our administration, pushed the development of tourism. For example, uh, we started the development of Oil Nut Bay Resort and also Scrub Island Resort, two developments in tourism where we had not seen any substantial development for many years. 
We also started the, the development and extension of the airport. But we recognized that the airport extension would take a considerable time. And we wanted to make sure that our tourism was really up and going as quickly as possible. Hence, we were happy to seize the opportunity to have direct flights to the BVI. What was the exact nature of the agreement specifically? Did the BVI government purchase those two planes, as we're hearing um, uh, around, among residents, to be used by BVI Airways, or was it some other form of agreement? How would you describe the agreement? No, the agreement simply was this. BVI government would contribute a maximum of $7 million to the project, and the principles of BVI Airways would deliver service to the BVI. Okay, so there were no planes, uh, no purchases of planes. Now, how much, much money, you mentioned $7 million, how much money exactly did the government give uh, to BVI Airways for the agreement and was it, how was it uh, distributed? Uh, what was the time frame? The $7 million was supposed to be until the, the flight um, happened, which would have been in 2017, I think. Um, there was initial, you know, the cabinet at Virgin Islands gave dates when specific payments would be made. However, you know, timetables do change sometimes. One of the early changes where some of the payments were accelerated was because there was difficulty in establishing a letter of credit that we had to establish for the program to go forward. Because, because of this, which was described as a breach by the principles of BVI Airways, there was an agreement to move some of the payments forward and also start to establish um, the funds in another, what they call, signature bank. Okay. As Minister of Tourism at the time, if the agreement was successful, what would those uh, additional flights have meant or done for the BVI uh, tourism product, in your opinion? One of the issues we've always had with our tourism product, whether it's land-based or charter-based, was the fact of getting people here to the islands. You'd have to come through St. Thomas or some other port, and those flights were sometimes difficult. And sometimes, they, and especially after the pullout of American Airlines, from the Puerto Rico BVI route, it became more challenging. Okay, now based on the Auditor General's report, the money seemed to have been given to the BVI Airways in a quicker time uh, than it was scheduled to. Now, was this uh, disbursement in keeping with the agreement? If not, why exactly? What's the reason for having deviated? As I explained a little earlier, the agreement was that $7 million would be given, and the agreement was that we gave over specific periods of time. However, because of the difficulty in establishing the letter of credit, the line of credit, this was considered a breach on our part, and to repair that breach, it was agreed that certain sums of money would be advanced before they were due to be advanced. And as Minister of Finance at the time, why did you choose to do that? We, I chose to do that because we were pursuing something which I thought was very important for the British Virgin Islands. That is something which was important to improve the tourism product. That is having direct flights from Miami to BVI. Now looking back, sir, do you think it was wise to enter into such an agreement uh, for direct flights to the BVI in U.S. or vice versa at the same time while undertaking an expansion of the airport? We recognize that to build an airport, expand it as we wanted to, would take, a concern, would take years. And we also recognize that in order to be competitive in the, as a jurisdiction in tourism, we needed to get the uh, airlift uh, sorted out as soon as possible. So we saw this direct flight from Miami to BVI as an interim step, so to speak, which would introduce an, an airline which would continue as well once the airport had been extended. Now, do you anticipate that this is the end of the matter or additional claims would be brought forward? And what would be the basis of any of those claims if they are? The, the um, arbitration um, process, which we, um, happened just a few weeks ago, was binding. So as far as I can understand, binding means that no further claims should come from a BVI on this matter. 
Okay. In your recent comments, sir, you indicated that you feel vindicated. vindicated. Uh, tell us why. What I mean is that myself and my colleagues were very keen on developing our ecotourism product, as I mentioned earlier, and hence we entered into, into this agreement. Um, because the agreement, because the, 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 their decide of a BVIA, BVIAs were not fulfilled, and we did not get um, the flight that we wanted, this was a bit of an issue. And therefore, we were able to challenge them. And in fact, there's a case ongoing. As I said earlier in my statement, employed, I engaged Mr. Martin Kenny, who essentially started the process. And as government should, the incoming government continued the process at Mr. Martin Kenny and company. All right. Now, would you do anything differently uh, with the deal? This is perhaps the first time you uh, are doing a public interview on the matter, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, why so, and why only now? I think it was what we were doing was important. And uh, looking back, I think we needed to be perhaps a bit more sure, but we were depending on the expertise of a uh, U.S. representative who introduced the, whole, the, the project to us, and this is why we carried on as we did expecting, fully expecting to have that flight delivered. Viewers, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. The wind! Oh. What in the hell? I'm freaking out! Jump it. He is about to speak. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the... What's poppin' what's really good? Viewers, welcome back. Continuing on, leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition here in the BVI, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn, said we have to be ready to reopen to cruise ships calling to the territory. Honorable Malone expressed to date, we have not received any updates or any information on the progress, processes, and or logistics of the reopening of the Cyril B. Rumney Tortola Pear Park and how it will manage the resumption of cruise lines to the territory in the coming weeks ahead. In addition, we have yet to receive the plans government has put in place to ensure our residents, business owners, employees, our entire population is protected once cruise lines begin calling to our port. He said tourism is the lifeblood of our economy, yet we continue to see the disturbing effects not having a plan in place has on business owners and employers in the tourism space. Honorable Penn added, uh, he further expressed that there are many persons across the territory who have been unemployed or underemployed for over a year now due to the pandemic. The lack of a clear and comprehensive plan negatively affects those persons' ability to plan and prepare for the near future in terms of their livelihood. One such clear example occurred this past weekend whereby the ferry passengers endured up to five hours delay in the arrival process at the Rotown Jetty, which ultimately results in a negative impact on our tourism product. Incidents like this, he said, further uh, erodes our stakeholders' confidence in both our entry protocols and our ability to get tourism product and economy moving again. What we are observing right now, he says, represents failure to present a comprehensive workable plan that finds the right equilibrium to protect the livelihood, livelihood sorry, of citizens and the many Virgin Islanders uh, who have businesses and employees that depend heavily on tourism. These businesses are virtually on life support, he said, with the livelihood of these businesses uh, and their owners afford to disorganize haphazard reopening of our cruise port. Now, the opposition leader encouraged the premier to ensure the necessary resources, equipment and systems are put in place to facilitate the reopening of the Cyril B. Rumney Tortola Pear Park and our territory on a larger scale to the visitors. Honorable Penn reiterated that he and his colleagues in the opposition continue to express that this administration has proven that there is no plan in place for the economic recovery of these Virgin Islands. The opposition leader employs the government to provide an update on all members, to all members of government and residents, and potential visitors to the territory on the progress of the reopening of the cruise port. 
The progress update will aid in business owners having a better idea of how to operate their business within the coming weeks. The opposition leader further stated that the suggestions both privately and publicly to the current administration in an effort to help uh, navigate the territory through the COVID-19 crisis on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. In conclusion, Honorable Penn said that he continues to urge the government to present a plan focused on the economic recovery and growth of these territories. On the international scene, five-time NBA champion, two-time NBA MVP, three-time NBA Finals MVP, and 15-time NBA All-Star player Tim Duncan of St. Croix, a native of St. Croix, uh, has officially uh, had another accolade associated with his name this past Saturday as he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mr. Duncan was officially inducted on Saturday into the uh, Nashmit Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame during a ceremony that began at 5.30 p.m. on ESPN. Now, Mr. Duncan uh, was inducted by former teammate and member of the Hall of Fame, David Robinson. Mr. Duncan was drafted number one overall in the 1997 NBA draft out of Wake Forest and dominated the NBA over the course of 19 seasons, all with the San Antonio Spurs. He won the Rookie of the Year after averaging some 21.1 points and 11.9 rebounds a game during the regular season of his initial year. Now, the legendary sportsman won his first title in 1999 when the Spurs defeated the New York Knicks in five games. He scored 33 points in Game 1 and was named the MVP of the series, averaging 27 points a game while securing 14 rebounds a contest. Now, Mr. Duncan uh, really second. His second title and second finals MVP was in 2003 when the Spurs defeated the then New Jersey Nets in six games. In that series, Mr. Duncan averaged 24.2 points per game, 17 rebounds, 5.3 assists, and 5.3 rebounds. His third title and third final MVP came in 2005 when Mr. Duncan averaged 20.6 points per game, 14.1 rebounds, 2.1 assists, and 2.1 blocks per game. San Antonio defeated the uh, Detroit Pistons in seven games that year. Now, in 2007, Mr. Duncan won his fourth title in a four-game sweep against Cleveland Cavaliers. However, teammate Tony Parker was named the Finals MVP that year. Mr. Duncan had a 18.3 points, 11.5 rebounds, 3.8 assists, and 2.3 blockings in that series. Now, during the fifth, his fifth and final championship in 2014, Mr. Duncan averaged 15 points and 10 rebounds a game. However, Kawhi Leonard was named MVP of that series. The Spur defeated uh, Miami Heat in five games. Mr. Duncan averaged 19 points and 10.8 rebounds per game in the regular season and 20.6 points and 11.4 rebounds per game in the playoffs throughout his career. Now his career high point in a game was 53, which he scored against the Dallas Mavericks on December 26, 2001. His career high for rebounds was 27, which he accumulated against the Atlanta Hawks on January 27, 2010. Fellow members of the Hall of Fame class of 2020 are the late Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, Eddie Sutton, Rudy Tamjukovic, uh, Tamik Kaching, Kim Mulkey, Barbara Stevens, and Patrick Booman. Now, Vanessa Bryant, Kobe's widow, uh, also spoke at this ceremony after Michael Jordan introduced him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, we know uh, the residents of the Virgin Islands, particularly in St. Croix, are quite proud of Mr. Duncan, who uh, has never forgotten his heritage. We uh, wish him a hearty congratulations on this very successful milestone. Viewers, that's it for today's News Roundup. Please be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. We will see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and of course international content. We are 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284media. A happy Monday to everyone and do enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.